Well, there are many images that come to all of our minds when we think of judgment. When we think of what that judgment is, we'll often think of the judgment with a big J, a capital J, the day of judgment. And in that, we'll think of, you know, darkness often, fear and trembling that we'll have with that. We think of that day that's to come, that, that, that God will, will bring a wrath even then and judge in a way that condemns some. A tough, tough, challenging time. But I want you to start in another place first. I want you to start in the place of our own lives, of our own selves. For what is judgment? What is judgment but a time in which we make decisions, and in which we make decisions about right and wrong? Uh, How do you know what to do and and what you're going to do? How many of those kind of decisions do we have to make every day but innumerable? So many decisions uh, that have to do with right choice, wrong choice, and, and we learn about that. We learn about how and and what are we going to do uh, based upon experiences that we have uh, because sometimes we learn the hard way uh, what we don't want to repeat then and what we don't want to follow after and so we avoid some things because we learn along the way the things that uh, the things that bring benefit to ourselves or to others or the things that bring pain and so we learn about those right and those wrong choices in that way But we very much learn as people of faith through the Holy Scriptures and through our relationship with God and Jesus about who we are and what we're called to do and how we're called to live. And we listen to that and we take that in and we receive and we learn and we grow through that as well. And we learn from others along the way, those who have gone before us, who also teach us that place of right and wrong. Hard to make the decision sometimes until maybe you've experienced doing something that you found, I won't do that again making a wrong turn, going down the wrong way, and finding uh, that's not going to lead me anywhere. You make a judgment then about what to repeat or not to repeat. You learn and you grow from it. We started out this journey at the beginning uh, in the season of, of Easter, talking a bit about John Wesley and that he really used these ways of, of trying to discern about who he was called to be and how we are all as disciples of Jesus the Christ. And you can see all of these ways help us to make right choices in life too but think clearly and think well about what you're going to do next and the next steps you're going to take but it's also that place of experience he said that experience that does help to teach us in life that kind of experience is part of that but most of it that he said that we need to get into what experience is is our experience with God in Jesus through the Holy Spirit it is that experience the experience of knowing God that we will receive judgment, right kind of judgment, making our own personal decisions, that leads us then to that place where Paul pronounced as he gathered with the people there about that day of judgment, that we arrive there in a shape and in a place where, where we will be trusting in God for that ultimate day of judgment. That's what Paul is teaching here. When he's speaking to all who are gathered there now, he's giving a lesson. He's been teaching them about making some good choices here. So he's called them on it, only it's things that go all the way to the heart. It's that which goes all the way deep into their own lives, spiritually, now, but eternally as well. And so he addresses the gathering that's there, and he addresses, he addresses them from a, from a place that, that is a rocky hill. That p- picture there down on the right is that rocky hill that he, maybe he stood upon, but others think that it wasn't exactly that site, the Oropagus that's there, because that has the tradition of it, of being that place where the Greeks would hold court and over the gods that were over them even. And they would hold it there on that rocky knoll there that would then be seen from far and wide in the community and judgments would be made from that place. And it's there that Paul is addressing them, but it is actually moved down into the city more for the gathering that's there of a court of those who would come that were of the elite, those who were the movers and shakers or those who made decisions about judgments about others could come and bring them before this tribunal to make judgment upon others' actions in the community. You could bring somebody else there and bring them up on some kind of charge, and others would listen. It's that group, that gathering in that location where Paul is speaking to the community there, and he is teaching them about some of the ways that they've made choices about who is God 
and he's bringing them into the way. He's helping them come from a way of they're just searching in the dark, he says in that passage, as though you've been groping in the dark trying to find who God is because there's some place in all of us which seeks God and yearns and longs for God, and he acknowledges that in the Greek community gathered there, but he said you've been groping long enough. I come now to tell you a truth. He comes now to tell them the fullness about who God really is, that God is a part of us, not just far off and way off into the universe somewhere where God set creation and just spitting and out there like the Greek gods are out and beyond us, but God is a part of your very life, he preaches on to them. So much a part of your life that he's in you and he moves in you in your very being and in your very breath. God is bringing them to a place, that Paul is bringing them to a place to have a personal relationship with God. Not the gods that are just out there and other planets and in other places, but a God, the God, who creates us and has a personal walk with us. And we know that most powerfully through Jesus the Christ, who is the one who comes to judge but to judge, to bring us into a relationship completely with God. So Paul is there on that rock that maybe, or even if it's in that other place down in the city, but up high on the hill is that, is that Parthenon, is that building that is so dominant there in the community that was then, and amazingly it is still today, the powerful columned edifice that's there. So Paul, speaking to them about about. The God who is unknown to them, he wants to make known to them. And his arm, no doubt, just reached up and pointed to that place of that pillared temple that's there. That our God is bigger than that. That our God is more powerful than the structures that we make, which we think contain God or make it that, that, that our God is one whom we can ever manipulate with idol worship and with the kind of a sacrifice that, that is made. No. Our God is so much more magnificent than that, much more powerful. We do not fashion our God, but our God fashions us, Paul will preach, as he lifts his arms to that Parthenon that would seem to stand forever as it still even stands today. But Paul helps us and them to understand the magnificence of God, the power of God, that God is faithful forever and that God has made us and has a future for us all. It's that God that Paul is speaking of, the one who lifts us to ever higher heights and magnificence in this world and in our lives. Paul preaches to them and speaks to them to help to open up their lives to know God intimately and personally in a powerful way, helping them to make good judgments, good choices. Because in that passage, he's saying the time is running out. You may have thought that you have forever to make the right choice yourself about who God is, who has come to us now completely in the risen one. The time is coming for a day of judgment. When you thought that one day would just merge into the next forever and ever, there comes a time when all will be fulfilled and there will be a completion of it. It's a day that you will want to be ready for, and you will want to know who the one judging is. And only to know who the one judging is is to come into that personal, intimate relationship with him. We notice that Paul doesn't even say the name Jesus in this passage, but refers to him over and over. The entirety of this passage is about the kingdom of God coming to rule in the one who is resurrected and powerful over all. Come to him to know the fullness of the truth. We do know about this fullness of the truth through the words that are preached and through, through what we hear in the scriptures that are there, and we need to learn of it through our own lives, through practicing it, through being the faith and living the faith out, uh, and, and, and following precepts and the principles and following the ways of life of Christ in order to discern and know of this complete judgment that's there, this complete way of life that's there. This is what Winston Churchill said, kites rise highest against the wind, not with it. 
You see, Paul was pushing back at them. You see, that's judgment. Judgment will come to try us, will, to, to press against us, to help us to grow and to think more clearly. God's judgment is that which comes into us to say, think differently than what you have been, live differently than what you have been living, and challenges us in our ways of being. As Paul challenged that entire community that for generations had been living in one way of believing. And he said, it's time now to turn that, to shift, to change all of that. He challenged them in a way that actually brought threat to himself. For he began in Acts persecuting the church. He will now become one who is persecuted because he is bringing the truth which challenges. That's what God's truth does to you in life, all of us is it'll challenge us and make us squirm and make us a bit uncomfortable and help us to kind of push back again. But only when that happens that God is molding us and helping us to form into something much more magnificent and greater and helping us to put aside false ways of thinking and believing and come into the true fullness of, of Christ that we will rise higher and higher. It is because of that judgment that's there that we might rather avoid my dad had ways of, of teaching the lesson. He, he, he had ways about telling me about right from wrong. It was his own unique kind of a way. I didn't appreciate it then, and I, I think I do today. Uh, but but when, when, so with dad, um, when, when we were working on, on a project, like, like he would be having me um, crack open butternuts, sometimes the walnuts. I like the walnuts because they were easy. You know, you, 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 you hammer them and, and they fall open. But the butternuts, they're hard as can be. And you gotta really hit it square and right on. You gotta be true when you're trying to crack open a butternut with a hammer, <laughs> because that's how he did it. You know, dad wasn't one to get any fancy gizmo of a tool, but a hammer will do, we got one of those. And so he would pull out the hammer and the basket full of butternuts and we'd sit on the back porch and he would just smack them with a hammer and they'd fall open. Hold it right between a thumb and a forefinger, just bing, and it would fall open, and he would get a whole nut right out of it. I'd just watch him. He'd just boom, run right after the other, just, just one right after the other. Well, he was a carpenter. He knew how to hit a nail dead on, just boom, with one, with one swing of the hammer. He had years and years of practice, but, you know, the kid, I wanted to do what Dad did, and I thought I could do what Dad did. So, Dad, can I help too? Well, sure. Get that hammer over there and get a butternut, and there I put it between my thumb and my forefinger and, and swing away swing away and boom, hit my thumb. And that's what dad would say, hurts, doesn't it? Bet you'll never do that again. <laughs> you see, that was his subtle way of teaching, right from wrong. Learning a lesson the hard way when you do something hurts, doesn't it? Uh, maybe you learn something there. Mm, go back to swinging a hammer. Never quite realized it as a youngster that it was because dad um, had years of experience. You know, it's years of experience about living the Christian life and persevering with it and working it that you're going to then be successful in it, that you're going to actually have some fruits then because you're working it. You're working the Christian walk. You're living in the ways of Christ. You're looking for how he's calling you to live and you're following through with it and you're keeping on moving ahead with, with, with how Christ is. And you're hearing his judgment time and again when we make a mistake when we go off the way. And then we hear Christ speak to us that says, that's not the way to go, my friend. Come this way. It's Christ's judgment for us. And so we repent and we say, oh Lord, call me back to that right place, that center place. We learn from the mistakes that we have. We learn those lessons that are there um, as we just keep on, keeping on with Christ. And we trust him along the way because there's always mercy with it. There's always the forgiveness that comes with it. It is God's judgment that indeed is a gift to us, a gift to us in a way when we trust God. It's all about that place of trust that we need to enter into, trusting God with our lives now and eternally. And in that way, God's judgment becomes a blessing for us because God always brings us to life in the name of Jesus. So let us go forth from here with good and sound judgment because your God goes with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us go forth. Amen.